All right. Well, welcome everyone to the February edition of Midday Cafe. And so if you just topped on, uh, Teresa McCloy was just sharing with us right before we hit record. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. I put the link there in the chat. And so we are celebrating. We have a year's worth of content in there and some excellent Enneagram professionals and practitioners that have shared in this space. So go back and make sure you catch um, any of those that you have missed. Um, and so that you can subscribe to the channel and uh, we would love, love for you to, to be a part of that. Um, we've also got some things. The IEA Global Conference was in our newsletter. And so that is in July. I'll put a link for that. But um, we just posted on our Enneagram Great Lakes Facebook page this week. They have announced the speakers for this year's conference. So make sure you check out the lineup. And there's still pre-registration opportunities. So um, IEA Global, it's out in Oakland, um, California. And so there's a couple other links that are in the <laughs> newsletter. And so we'll just give you um, some training that are coming up and certifications. Uh, Dr. Jerome <laughs> Wagner has something coming up in March out in Las Vegas. So if you're looking for an opportunity to travel west, Claire always calls that an Enneagram vacation. Uh, you can take advantage of that. And then he's got several things coming up throughout the summer. So June and July both. Um, so I'll post the link for his website as well. And then if you're looking for a great reason to go to Michigan in the summer, which it is beautiful in June, uh, Motions of the Soul, uh, the second and final opportunity of 2019. So um, the Motions of the Soul training and certification with Claire and Scott Lowridge at uh, Crossroads Church is an excellent opportunity for you to get a glimpse of this Harmony Triad model and uh, Claire's work. And so um, without further ado, Claire, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to you and you can share with us where in the world is Claire Lowridge and <laughs> it has started for the day. Well, you know, I, I'm really glad that I'm not in the polar vortex right now. It's been, it has been the weirdest weather in Michigan, even though Michigan is known for its weird weather, this has taken it to a whole nother level. You know, we had uh, 40 below wind chill and uh, you know, there was just, there was a state of emergency. It, it's really been crazy. So I'm not there now. I'm in sunny Florida and for only four days, but it will, I think, be enough time to thaw out. So all of you Southerners, you just don't understand how difficult our life is up here in, in, the, uh, in the Midwest, right, Erica, Teresa? <laughs> Yes. All of our other Midwesterners. Yeah. Um, so we're really glad you're with us today. Uh, about a year ago, uh, we launched the first uh, YouTube filming of the Zoom call. And um, there were probably about eight of us that even knew we existed at that point. And, and so we did a short teaching on Harmony Triads. And the Harmony Triad model, many of you are familiar with it because you've been with us uh, in Michigan. And, um, but it is the way we see uh, the work of transformation. The Process Enneagram is a beautiful diagnostic tool and has um, ways of telling us how we move to stress, how we move when we're relaxed. But the Harmony Triad model is uh, something we believe we saw in the work of Evagrius Ponticus in the third century and uh, Raymond Lull in the 14th century. And then um, by, uh, you know, by design, I was at Loyola University in 2009 and Dr. David Daniels put up the Harmony Triad model um, and just said, you know, keep your eyes open, friends. You're, you're going to be seeing more of this. And when I saw the three triangles, my um, my everything within me said yes. Um, I had uh, a difficult time even as a spiritual director remembering, okay, which way do they go when they're stressed? Which way do they go when they're relaxed? And, you know, and so having to have my little cheat sheet out all the time. But it, I get to carry this cheat sheet now, mm -hmm. which is a triangle. So, you know, anybody who wants to do the sign of the triangle, um, so as a person in my faith tradition, uh, I am a Trinitarian uh, Christian, so I um, have uh, been open to understanding God in the Trinitarian model, which is Father, Son, and Spirit. 
and the Harmony Triads. So you, if you're not a, a, um, a Trinitarian, you, this doesn't mean you can't use this model. It just is, uh, in fact, um, the way that Dr. Daniels taught it, that following, I think it was maybe 2012, with the Enneagram and the narrative tradition, he taught um, the Harmony Triad model, and actually he and Helen Palmer put together an entire uh, conference on it uh, in Washington, D.C. And so people from different faith traditions were talking about the, um, the value of each type having a head, heart, and gut space. Uh, Helen Palmer um, wrote in uh, the IEA journal, which is our scholarly journal, um, about uh, Evagrius Ponticus and what she thought he might have seen when he said the heavens declare the glory of God. And she indicates that what she believes Evagrius saw were the three triangles. Um, so I'm going to share a, uh, a screen with you here. Um, and so you let me know how I'm doing with it uh, and if we're actually going to get it up there easily. Um, so this screen, uh, which I have to end that, let me do this. I'm going to hit share. And my, are you all seeing it? Great, mm -hmm. great. So what I'd like to do is give you um, this in full screen. So I'm probably going to disappear. I don't know. But uh, correct me, Teresa or Erica, if you need me to do something different. But I'm going to try to put it in presenter view so that you get a little bit larger. Um, although it's not actually giving me that option right now. So OK. So we're just going to have to deal with that. All right. So there you here, go. That works. The, yeah. Here is the Harmony Triad model. And, um, and so what you see here is 147, 258, and 369. And with that, you have actually um, a new name for each of the types. And what it incorporates is all three centers of intelligence. So as you know, Enneagram friends, you know that eight, nine, and one are the gut space, two, three, and four are the heart space, five, six, and seven are the headspace. And when we give them connection, uh, what we say is it creates harmony. And so this is a, a, a model that doesn't dismiss head. So for instance, seven and five with the process Enneagram are two-headed and no-hearted. And um, the two, you know, when you look at the two and the four in the uh, process Enneagram, they are two-hearted and no-headed. With Harmony, you're actually giving access to every type to uh, tap into their intelligence, both or all, head, heart, and gut. So one of the ways that we um, began to look at this when I was putting together my training program was how do we teach Harmony? How do we help people access all three centers of intelligence? And so the work that I began to do around that was to develop um, practices like a head, heart, gut, motion mantra, which is what you're seeing all the way around the circle, that you could even breathe in in a moment of difficulty to remind yourself or remember, you know, bring something back in as a member that belongs to you, to remember uh, what is either undernourished in your life or maybe even dismissed. And that's actually a whole section in our training is discovering your dismissed childlike self. So um, when we give practices, simple ones like this, and then there are some other ones that are a bit more robust, um, this practice gives you a quick way as a nine to say, okay, he's peaceful, right? But we don't want him stuck in his type. Or he'll be stuck in his gut, not accessing the heart and head that is a grace to him. So that head, heart, gut, motion, mantra, peace affects team, is a way to remember all that's available. So in that um, Harmony Triad model, we actually use, utilize this little test to say, you know, ones, when you're stuck in your type, you take a position or you're in perfection and it keeps you from being present or harmonious. As a two, when you're people-pleasing or possessive, 
it keeps you from presence. When you're a three, your performance and your pragmatism can keep you from presence. And this harmony helps you come home to yourself and be present to yourself and the presence of God. Fours, when you're personalizing or pouting, it'll keep you from presence. Fives, if you're pontificating or privatizing, it'll keep you from presence. Sixes, when you're paranoid or pledging, and when I say pledging, it's like I'm, I'm sticking with it. Even if my religion says let's fly our planes into the Twin Towers, I'm staying with it because I got to be faithful. I got to be loyal. So if you're pledging, it'll keep you from presence, accessing your heart and your gut. Uh, sevens, when you're playing and you're preoccupied, it keeps you from presence. But if you're engaging your one and your four, you can be present. Eights, if you're powering up and prosecuting, keeps you from presence. And the beautiful two and five give so much grace for that eight to be present and harmonious. And nines, we talked about that right at the top. Powering down and procrastinating keeps them from presence. So here's this little model that I like to use to say when you're stuck on your edge, you're stuck in the vice of that number. But when you're accessing this triangle, you are opening up to the grace. You're centered, you're harmonizing, you're utilizing your head, your heart, and your gut. So that is really my elevator speech for the Harmony Triads in the way that I uh, teach it in my training program. Um, and, you know, the fun of today is that I get to interview Teresa McCloy, who uh, is one of my students. And so she's certified through um, the uh, Enneagram Harmony Triad model. And she has put it together with her brilliant real life coaching. And she's integrated it in a way that um, I... Did she freeze on you Teresa? all? Oh, yeah. She came back. Yeah. So welcome, Teresa. Thank you. Um, Thank you for the good work you're doing with Harmony Triads and the way that you have taken it to a, another group of people that I know are really benefiting from your, your wisdom. Thank you, Claire. Do you want to stop sharing your screen or do you want to stay sure. with share? Absolutely. I can and stop can sharing. see everybody's faces. Let's see. How can I stop sharing that screen? Uh, if you roll up towards the top, I was trying to see if... Uh, I think I can do it, maybe. Thank you. No, I can't. Okay, Sorry. Let's, let's say unshare somewhere. Stop sharing. Let's see. Down at the bottom or at the top if you roll up. All right, you start um, talking, Teresa, and I'll keep working on this. Okay. Um, so, yes, I have, you know, much the same experience as uh, Claire did with the Harmony Triad model, only I received it from Claire. So I was in a spiritual formation community in Chicago and um, was, um, had been introduced to what Claire referred to as the process Enneagram and um, then picked up one of Claire's books off the table and kind of had that same aha of like, oh, this makes so much more sense to me that I would be connected to all three uh, centers of intelligence and that I would have access to all three. I'm a type three on the Enneagram and I do work as a business coach, but love the tool of the Enneagram and love using it with actually all the work that we do. Erica also works with me. So we work together at the real life process and we do. We just find it so helpful uh, for small business owners, for entrepreneurs and creators and leaders. That's kind of the groups that we work with to the more self-awareness that they can have, um, the better they can grow their teams, the better they can lead their businesses. And so we take this harmony triad model and really help people because you know, like EQ, for example, is very hot in the business world right now. You hear a lot about EQ. Well, the Enneagram has that EQ piece. And so if I can help a client discover more of how to bring out their EQ through the Harmony Triad, they're going to be a much better leader for their team. And uh, so it partners so well and so beautifully. And we love um, the work that we're getting to do with, with both coaching and then bringing the Enneagram into that. Beautiful. And so I guess what I... I probably should do just because some folks may not be uh, understanding this, even this idea of 
IQ, EQ, and GQ is I'm going to share this screen one more time with this particular um, uh, graphic on it. And so when you're talking about um, EQ, it's the two, three, and four. IQ is five, six, and seven. And the GQ, which is gut intelligence. So you've got emotional intelligence, the intellectual intelligence, and the gut intelligence. So it's IQ, EQ, and GQ. So there you go. And I'll stop sharing that now. And, and tell me about how are your, um, how do you help your coaches access these centers of intelligence? What's the, uh, what, well, what's the way you're approaching? I've taken the work that you have done and really integrated it into my process. So, uh, which I think is the beauty of the Enneagram for each and every one of us is it's an amazing tool and we can use it for our own selves. But when we're able to share it through our lens, whatever that is, spiritual director, a business consultant, a coach, uh, you know, a teacher, um, a health coach, whatever it is that you do and is kind of the people that you serve and that you know, I feel that you've been called to serve when you can use the tool as the basis for self-awareness. Many times in coaching, we say, you know, even if you're a business coach, it's always going to come back to life coaching. Even if you're, you know, it always comes back to that core of helping someone be their best self, no matter how you're serving people. And so the Harmony Triad, you know, I think a lot of leaders have been taught to lead from their gut instinct. You know, we know how to do that depending on who we are. We know how to use our intelligence um, and, and the knowledge that we have. I think the EQ for many people can sometimes, depending if it's your home type, you might lead from that space. Um, but I, I think the connection of all three, you talked about the dismissed childlike self. I find for so many of my clients that they eventually, through the work that we do in coaching, uh, courses that we have, that they eventually learn that wow, there's something I've been ignoring kind of my whole life. And if I can discover that and go back and revisit that and whatever work I need to do, um, it's not always counseling, you know, but if I can just recognize it, then I'm going to be so much of a better business owner and a better leader, a better parent, whatever it is, um, yeah. through that dismissed place. Yeah, and so um, let me just, we won't go there. We might even talk about that one, Doug and Adele Calhoun join us. Sure, but, I, but that's how yeah. I discover it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so tell me with your productivity model, because I think mm -hmm. all of us would like to be um, effective in, in a way that is healthy for each of us to uh, utilize our own lives. Uh, even as Ruthie talked to us last last. Uh, month about we are the books right mm -hmm. and so allowing our lives to um to show up in the world in a way that graces others you use the word productivity so tell us about the productivity and how that works with each of the types well one of the phrases that i use a lot in uh things is forget being productive and do what matters and so, cause we do a lot about productivity of how much can we get done? And that can leave us with that feeling, you know, even through each of the Enneagram types, like we didn't do enough. We didn't love enough. We didn't, you know, uh, have enough knowledge. It's that it's not enough place. So that forget being productive because I, I will claim workaholism all day long. That was my, you know, as a three, that's very typical. And so I had to stop thinking about what I was doing and I really helped my clients discover what matters to you. How are you, you know, what are the things you want to be spending your time doing? Um, what are the things that are your values? What, how do you want your life to look? I work with a lot of people that are um, midlife or in transition. And I think that's even a part of the work of the Enneagram. Many times, you know, late thirties, early forties, as we get into that season, we're like, well, that was working for me really well, <laughs> but we hit something that causes a shift or a turn in our life. And that was kind of my story, but helping people know what matters to them and what they really value um, through the lens of the Enneagram and then through the work that they're doing in their business 
shifts it away from how much can I get done. Once we discover that, I will say that, then we have processes. We have a five-step system for how to manage your time, how to decide what you're doing in the next 90 days. But the work first comes in what do, what do I value, what matters to me. An example of that is um, I've always loved to travel, but I didn't have it as one of my values. And when I switched it to being one of the things that I valued, now it's showing up on my calendar and I'm making time for it. So it's taking that bigger vision and going, how am I living that out in my life now? Not waiting till I'm, you know, to a point where maybe I can't travel, but how am I living out what I value now? So discovering the big and then making it, uh, you know, productive or seeing it in my calendar than where it's showing up. Yeah. So I guess what I'd like to ask all of our friends today is, um, you know, if you've learned the Harmony process model, of course, you know the great value of it. And as Mario Sakura uh, lovingly quotes someone, but it's, I always give Mario the credit to start with, um, he said, you know, all models are wrong, but some are useful. And then my husband reframed that and he said, all models are incomplete, but some are useful. Um, so when you think about uh, the way you've learned the Enneagram, I know Bill and Ruthie and some others, you, you know, you've been very well trained in, uh, in the process, uh, Enneagram, the arrow theory, the wing theory. Um, uh, and, and so when you think about Harmony Triads, what comes up for you? I just would love to hear it. Orion, any of, any of our friends who have been steeped in the other models? Well... I I, I, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, you go, Bill. Go. Thank you. See, we're both two, so we both want to help out. There you go. I love you both. <laughs> no, I when I discovered it, uh, I was at that conference in Washington with David uh, that you referred to, and I it just really opened up my reality because I never spent any time in the five or the headspace, and in fact, being too hearted is a bit overwhelming for a two because we're already hyper focused on emotional uh, expansion. And just when he told me, Bill, if you just spend a little time in the five space, you may not react so aggressively because I would go right to my eight uh, in that, you know, the arrow, arrow theory where it was high intensity and high and the negative side of eight, not the power side of eight. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the justice side and all the giving side of eight. And so what was wonderful is if I spent a little bit of time in five and I thought about why was that a trigger for me? Why was someone, re why, why did I feel a need to kind of power up and go at them? I would just kind of enjoy going to the eight in a more positive way because eight is a really great type, but it can be really misused by a two. Uh, at least in my experience. So having that heads time really made a huge difference. I mean, I'm married to a head type, so that helps. She's kept me in check for 42 years, but um, doing it myself, it was a different experience. So I love it. I really yeah. do. And, and Bill, what do you think of my head, heart, gut type uh, motion mantra for for twos, love contemplates, then decides. Yes, I love it. It's exactly, that. it's the contemplation piece that I was missing. Mm -hmm. I was going right to the decision space. And that the contemplation, because there is a lot to offer as a two, um, but I can see how quickly it can move to action. And it's ne not necessarily a positive action. And I saw that in my relationships with, when I was you know, leading companies, I would get really frustrated with people and I would immediately take action. And when I stepped back and observed a little bit, that observation piece, that contemplation piece, really is powerful. Yeah, so I love it. It's great. I, Thank you. I love what you say, Bill, there from a, a business standpoint, you know, as a business owner, because um, I was just talking about that. I have a podcast that I just started that really talks about the harmony triads and and I was doing a piece right now on leadership and I talked about the 852 and if the two has facts you know if they contemplate and gather information then they can take the action of the eight and I love what you just gave in that example of if I was leading a team and I stepped back and instead of 
over loving them. If I looked at facts and looked at information, um, then, then I could take action out of the eight in a much healthier way. So, well, and the reality for it too is often our emotions are our facts, Mm -hmm. not real facts, but (laughs) they seem really real to us. And so as a result, until I spent a little time researching and calming down and remembering that my wife always tells me, don't flatter yourself, Bill, they're not thinking about you. Because I factor that as an absolute. Like I felt something, so that must be real. Mm-hmm. And the other person was like, no, nah, that, that's not happening in my space. So that, yeah, it just really, it's a calming thing too. I mean, that contemplation uh, is a very, it's calming. Because even just talking about it, I get excited, you know. So just take a chill pill, and then then you can really utilize the eight space because it's it's a great type to tap into, but not in an not in an unhealthy way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a friend of mine said, and I love this quote about it too. You can care for them, like if you're leading a team and you're the leader as a two, you can care for them, but that's different than taking care of them. Yes. And <laughs> I thought, powerful. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's a difference between caring for someone and then, you know, paying their bills and letting them move in and all the things that we can do in the heart space. I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. I think Ruthie had something. And then I mm-hmm. also want to say, think of questions, friends. Um, if you have a question here for Teresa uh, or for me, you know, so feel free to do that as well. Ruthie. Well, a couple of things that I want to add is um, that from a spiritual point of view, I mean, I think that um, you always get surrounded by the underdeveloped parts of yourself. Uh-huh. So, you know, it isn't an accident that my father was a five and my son is a five. And so there they were. And if I wanted to connect with them, you know, that I needed to develop that in myself, that, that, that feeling that, um, you know, that they, they needed to connect with my heart. They need to develop their heart, feel things through. And I needed to be able to move up in my head and come from a place of knowledge in order to um, connect with them. Uh, Also, you know, that part about not just contemplating, but, you know, just, you know, the forward movement of the two as opposed to the just pulling back like the camera to yes. live in close up, you know, and, and this ability to pull back into a long shot and, and see things clearly. So the irony is that, um, you know, I knew before I even knew the Enneagram that, um, books were really important and learning was really important to me and that then when I you know 22 years 25 years ago I was given the Enneagram in it and it was like oh this is a missing part of me and I really can't be a helpful person I can't really be whole unless I develop that head and um so that's that's why I I I think that life is going to lead you into this harmony thing, whether you want to, or not, <laughs> if you are a person who's interested in development. Oh, you know, beautiful, you know, beautiful. Not, you're going to be led there. But the only other thing that I want to add is that, you know, then, then to move to, you know, the a third model. And that for me is the integration of all the types into myself. So for me as a two, like, you know, there isn't anything that says that, um, you know, any model that says it. But from my point of view, like when I was teaching acting classes, I would make each person, you know, play one, you know, wake up in the morning. And so I'm a two, but today I'm a seven all day. And how do I see the world through that lens? And for me, like, you know, what can get missed in any of these where there's, triads or even wings are access points. Those are the parts we tend to overdevelop. And I feel like, um, you know, the ones that we feel the least kinship to are our shadows 
and from my point of view, those are the ones that have to be developed. So there's nothing so, that says I should go to seven, but that is yeah, really yeah. important for me. To so we'll talk about that on another pot. We'll talk about that on another moment, right? Because that is again another model that can help us. Yeah. And um, and so I wonder, are there any questions around harmony that you all have? I, I have a comment there, uh, Claire, too, of what Ruthie was saying. And I think it's really helpful when we think about, you know, bringing our best self to uh, the teams we're leading or, or the people that we're working with or whether it's ministry or business or whatever is that, and maybe you can say a little bit more about that if you'd like, is that um, I just think it's beautiful how in the tri Harmony Triad model we have access to the away part of something, the toward and the against or the forward, the bold, whatever you want to call it. Um, for me, that was huge in my development out of being so driven and so much about productivity because when I could access the nine, which invited me away and invited me to more peace, then I actually became uh, a better leader uh, you know, leading into, like I said, those things that I valued in my life. So would you want to talk about that a little bit and say a little bit yeah. more about that, how that completes to me all three motions? Yeah. So this is um, one of the, the diagrams in putting together um, the, the training for the harmony uh, here in, in Marshall was taking Ginger Lapid Bogda's trios so she talks about seven, nine, and two being optimistic types. The one, three, and five, they're competency types. And four, six, and eight are intensity types. And then, of course, you've got uh, Karen, the Hornavian tri uh, trends, as some would call it. You have two, three, and seven that move toward. You have five, nine, and four that move away. And you have eight, six, and one that move against. And what Harmony does is gives this kind of uh, access to the moments where you need to be optimistic, times when you need to be competent, and sometimes when you need to bring intensity, right? And so it's never just all one uh, kind of, you know, moving into a situation that we need. Sometimes we need to move toward, uh, to Ruthie's point, move away as, you know, so the two moves toward, the five moves away, and the eight moves against. And so this model says, you know, wow, we could actually um, not just always move towards. So as a heart type, it is my automatic response to try to connect. And when connection is broken, like how do I connect now? How do I connect now? So I'm always moving toward when I'm on automatic. But I desperately need the move away energy of the nine. And I need not just that, uh, that competency type as a three, but I need the optimism of the nine and I need the intensity of the six and the moving against in, you know, energy of the six. So take a look at your own harmony triad there and just, you know, wonder about the last time you knew you overplayed your gift of optimism or competency or intensity or your ability to move toward away or against and you overdid it. And it didn't give you what you wanted. And then you did it again. And you said, why do I keep doing that? You know? Um, so this really does um, offer a grace, I think, when we look at the wisdom of uh, both Ginger and, um, and Karen Horney mm -hmm. with Harmony. And I love how I use this so much with people in the business world and in coaching because, you know, out in the world, I mean, people are taught to just go, just use their gift, use how they're done and they just use it and use it. And when they learn to step back and then also learn, especially if they're leading a team, I have two guys that I work with that uh, are business partners. And as they've discovered the tool of the Enneagram and learned to one is a nine and one is a one, <laughs> you know, just 
give grace and empathy to each other in how they're gifted and how their harmony triads work. I mean, it's been amazing to see the growth that they've had together as business partners because of the common language that they're sharing and now sharing with their wives and into their families and just, you know, it's not only affecting their business now, but also their marriages. And so it's just beautiful to see that kind of work develop um, out of that discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. It is very powerful. Any questions? Our brilliant any of friends? <laughs> any eights want to challenge it? Any sixes want to ask for clarification? Any twos want to say you love us? Claire, I think, you know, it's been neat to see Teresa and I both have been through your certification. So, you know, it's kind of where we started. And then, you know, people just kept asking, you know, Teresa questions over the last year. How do you use this as a coach? And so, um, Teresa, would you say more just about even how as a coach, it helps you personally in your approach with clients um, and just professional relationships in general with consultants? And, then, um, and right after that, Teresa, you've got Shauna raising her hand. I so. just saw that down there too. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, it is, I learned early on, I really thought I was moving towards spiritual direction in some of the training that I was doing, but I learned early on that I was more of a coach approach style uh, to how I wanted to work with people and how I wanted to serve people. And as I worked more in my coaches training, um, I realized that the tool of the Enneagram could be the basis and the foundation for all of that. And so um, I can't imagine kind of doing coaching without that foundational tool and without using that tool. I do use for myself, I use uh, Jerry Wagner's assessment is the tool that I go to uh, as I work with clients. If you're not familiar with that, um, we can post that in the chat. But um, I really feel like his assessment, uh, because I work with a lot of people online, that it is one of the most accurate assessments out there and a great tool. And so even though it's written in the process Enneagram form, I can still use it uh, oh, yeah. very well as uh, a tool and, and talk with people through the Harmony Triads because I still love the wings and arrows and I still reference them. It's not my first go-to. It's kind of the second. I think like Ruthie said, all the processes, all the models are useful and as people dive deeper and deeper, they can discover what one, you know, kind of uh, works well for them. I just feel that the Harmony Triad has been uh, awesome in the coaching space for helping people to discover all three centers of intelligence. Because there's not a business person out there, there's not a leader out there that doesn't want to bring their best self to their business and their team. And so if I can, as Ruthie said, grow in one part of myself, absolutely, I'm going to take advantage of that and do it. So Shauna has a question. I think she raised her hand down there. Shauna, you want to unmute? I think I did. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah. So I'm not a two, but I do love you guys. Um, <laughs> but we I love just, you too, Shauna. <laughs> I really agree with um, Teresa as far as um, the usefulness of of the um, arrow theories and then also like my connection my deep connection with the harmony triad um, as sort of a move toward centeredness or wholeness you know however your tradition sort of um, talks about that thing um, and then also when I was very first introduced to the trios like that just showed me the levels of the like another level of the Enneagram and it was really important to me um, because I got to connect with um, a two and a nine that I, excuse me, that I really respect um, as an I am a seven. And it just gave me a little bit of insight to into two people that I really love. One is a two and one is a nine. And I didn't realize um, what sort of connection that we had as um, Enneagram types. And so it was just, you know, one more way that the Enneagram gave me to um, connect with other people and also respond to other people from where they're coming from. 
-hmm. Yeah. So you're talking about the optimism types, that two, nine, and the seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, and, you know, I mentioned the podcast earlier and the reason that it's called the Enneagram in your real life, if you want to search for it in podcasts, I think Eric put a link there as well. But the reason I wanted to kind of venture out into that world is really to talk about um, the Enneagram in the Harmony Triad model and also, you know, for the space that I work in to help people uh, that are entrepreneurs, creators, and leaders see how... Um, the Enneagram, you know, day in and day out can be used in their life and the teams that they're building. Um, I love Ginger's work. Er, uh, Claire mentioned her earlier, uh, the Enneagram and business work that she does. And I was excited to see, I don't know exactly where she's going with it, but I was excited to see that in the, um, um, what I want to say, Erica, the IEA, the event, she's doing a workshop and it has something to do with the threes of uh, um, uh, there. And so I'm excited to see where she's going with that. And uh, as Claire's new book comes out, you know, where they're going to give us some great tools in, uh, in that too, in the practices that Claire was talking about earlier. So we've got a lot of great resources out there in the Enneagram space that we can draw from and use in whatever work we're doing. And I think that'd be a great question. I would love to hear from you on the call as to how you're using Enneagram in your certain kind of specializations or niche, or is it just a personal tool that you're using or how are you using it? Yeah, maybe we could start with Wendy, um, just because we've heard from, uh, as I'm looking across, we'll start with Wendy and, and keep going there. Hello, Wendy. Hi. Um, well, I first used it for myself personally, which I use on a daily basis. Um, and then um, my husband and I also uh, build business teams. And so we, we don't use it with everybody in our business team, but we use it with um, those who we see are leaders um, who um, kind of need to go up to a higher level, maybe is kind of a way I would say it. Um, and so we use it with them. And we also use it with people who maybe even if they're not leader types, but I can tell that they're really stuck. Um, and sometimes, you know, we use some other personality um, theories and whatnot, but I really, um, I feel like the Enneagram has really been very helpful I know for our marriage personally um, but then with other people who are kind of stuck I think that the Enneagram gives them that motion to help them get unstuck um, and move towards transformation so that's pretty much those two main areas um, in that we also we're now starting to get more into um, we now have a lot of young people that we work with so um, when they're starting to um, get engaged and things like that. They want to meet with us and talk with us about that. And so now we are um, starting to dive into helping them using the Enneagram um, in starting their marriage off in a good, healthy way. Yeah. And you yes. use the harmony model and yes. you just, you and Josh were just telling me recently about how that really opened the door for a stuck three that was yes. uh, unable to go to nine and rest and go to six and ask questions. Mm -hmm. It just kind of yes. barreled through. Yeah. And we had a very, very stuck eight we were working with as well. Um, I mean, stuck for 10 plus years. Could not get traction. I'm a Macy still married today. Um, but just to hear a, a really stuck eight talk about love and loving people and just really being able to touch his heart space. Um, you know, you can't do that with other personality models that I've ever seen. So it's, we love it, but yeah, we use the Harmony Triads. Yeah. Diana or Orion or Leanne or John. I can talk. Okay, so um, yeah, I use mine pretty much the same way, you know, first for myself and understanding others. The book that really helped me the most was Helen Palmer's the Enneagram and love and work. And uh, as a pastor, if I would have a conflict with someone, uh, I'd always come home and I'd read that, you know, and that would help me to understand myself and the other person. And it really got me through a lot of uh, touchy situations. And I also used it in my pre-marriage counseling. 
Um, my, now my family is finally getting into it a little bit more. And so we have fun understanding that. And, uh, and I'm now teaching a course. Uh, there's not a lot going on around here in the Wisconsin area that I'm aware of. So I wish people would contact me, you know, for what's going on in the um, uh, Milwaukee area. And I'm teaching a course right now. And people love it to understand their in-laws and understand their children. And I'm also going to be teaching a course at the uh, local library. So I'm trying to get it going. Beautiful. Beautiful. God bless you. Hey, John, how's it working in therapy as a therapist? What's, are you using Harmony uh, triads in therapy? Okay. I am in kind of the most recent area. I've been asked uh, by the negotiation team at the police department. I'm on the team itself, but I've been asked to do some training and I'm actually going to use the Enneagram for all of our negotiators. We all serve different roles on the team, but even on my role on the team, the idea that love contemplates and decides, I mean, when you're in a negotiation situation with someone who is uh, an intense crisis, perhaps they're barricaded and they have a weapon, they're threatening to harm somebody or themselves. You have to contemplate fast, uh, <laughs> and, you know, but yet at the same time, it's crucial that that could, it's life mm. or death. Mm. Uh, and so we're, as a team, uh, they've asked me to do, I was telling them about the Enneagram and I got back from Marshall and they've asked me to do, to give everybody the test and to discuss the, tri the Harmony triads and everything. Uh, so I'm really excited about that we're going to do that soon. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think something you're naming is really important when you have to contemplate fast, that means that you have needed a practice. So if you're regularly practicing accessing head, heart, and gut, it is, you're developing that new neural pathway. So you're really, the practice um, that you've been operating in regularly comes up in a moment that needs you to do it quickly. Yes. Um, to, yeah. Uh, to quote Sean, your brother-in-law, you know, uh, I, I have, I'm fully capable of going to my bad eight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and sometimes when we're encountering people just in the field who are very difficult, uh, mm -hmm. it's real tempting to go to that bad eight mm -hmm. and you can't, you just, if, if you want to be a peacemaker and you want to make, you want to bring the rhetoric down and not up, um, the, this is, this is so incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. Claire, yeah. Leanne, Leanne had a question too that she put in the chat that I want to answer before we hop off. But great, please do. Okay, um, Leanne asked, like, how do I walk through an example of how I would use the Harmony Triads with a client? Like, how would I walk them through it? So, our process, and you know, everybody's different in how you would use the tool, but our process is if they've they do an assessment and then we use uh, the words uh, lists of like, we call them authentic and adaptive or, you know, Claire's used some different language there, but you know, these are words that you can identify authentically through your three. I'll use my triad, the three, the six and the nine. And these are adaptive words. And I walk through those lists with people and just have them give me, almost helping to form their mantra, <laughs> you know, like let's look at uh, how you could use this in the teams that you lead or in the business that you have. Not all the people I work with have teams. Some are solo entrepreneurs, but let's look at this. And we're looking for, for me personally right now, I feel that there's so much uh, that really pulls from our adaptive sides or our less resourceful, you know, even the little cartoons that we see are always bringing out kind of that side of ourselves and i really want to have people see the gift that they bring to the world <laughs> the positive of what they bring i had someone comment back from my podcast that was a four so a typical four comment that said thank you so much for helping me see the good that a four brings to the world because so many times it's focused on you know we focus on the well this is how you'll know yourself through kind of this behavior over here which is that out on our edge behavior and to shift that thinking over to the positive the authentic part of who we've been created to be so 
I work with a word list a lot because it's something they can have in front of them and I can have in front of me and we're, you know, we're talking through the same thing. And so I have a packet that I send back to people after they take an assessment that we've created that gives them that list of words and it's kind of a worksheet for them to work through. And so that's how I get them thinking about all three centers of their intelligence. And then we just go from there as we're coaching together and working together. I hope that helps answer your question, but. And, and Claire's book references you? those, other things reference those, those word lists. Yeah, and can people contact you? Sure. Lisa, post. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, and, uh, yeah. and get more, more information on that and how you help. Yeah, you can put my people. email in yeah. there, uh, Erica, if you want or whatever, and, and let me know. I'd be glad to follow up with anybody. One of my passions is to help see people develop um, how they're going to use the Enneagram out into the world. I mean, that's just a passion for me, whether it's coaching or spiritual direction or consulting, but how can you take this tool and not, I don't love the word market, but how can you take this tool and bring it to more people um, and use it in the way that's, we're all different. That's why I love hearing how everybody's using it. But, um, but we all have a way that we can bring it to the world. It's going to be a little bit different for each one of us. Yeah. Well, all right, we have time maybe for one more question or comment. Don't be shy. Rob Henson, are you able to talk? I'm gonna call him out. Rob just took a trip, uh, he's a friend of mine, he just took a trip to Iceland and did some, did some discovery in Iceland. Would you like to share anything about your trip and just what you had there you may be driving you may not be able to so i just can't look at you while i'm doing it um, <laughs> yeah iceland was uh wonderful i'm so grateful to Teresa for giving me the book uh, invitation to retreat before i went because i used that book as my guide really grateful for the um the reflection uh, work that i got to do with Teresa and her team about me being in that uh, i'm a two and being able to access my five and my my eight, um, and I learned I learned quite a bit on that trip. And I need to actually sit down with Teresa here soon and uh, talk about uh, the things I learned and was able to process. One of the greatest gifts, and I heard Bill talk about it earlier, and it, it made me chuckle a little bit because uh, I resonate so much with it. Is out of my my two-ness i've i've moved to my eight so fast in my 41 years and now with this great gift of the harmony triad i can pause for a while in my five i'm going to pull over here i can pause for a while in my five and inform my heart and my soul inform it about what i'm feeling and gosh has that changed things for me since october mm -hmm. or so since our conversation so I'm talking to my friends. Hello. Thank you, Rob. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I just knew that you've had some great aha moments with yeah. with your Harmony Triad discovery and just how much for it too, as Bill was talking, I was thinking of you, how much that five and eight have come into play for you. And yeah, yeah. I'm just so grateful for that. Well, I'm grateful that you helped me with that because my five is slowing the roll on my two which is good <laughs> yeah well thank you for my thank you. so let's just thank teresa for uh being the kind of coach that can help people go to iceland <laughs> you know i mean it is really it is really a gift to have someone that can guide um us into the way of peace into the way of harmony into the way of uh, loving our soul and letting go of compulsions and disordered attachments, uh, ways that we can um, receive more of the terrain of our soul. So, Teresa, rock on, sister. You are, you are doing great things. And we know, um, even with the word market, I know as your transforming self, um, ha you know, resist words like that as a three because people would typically just judge you on that kind of a scenario that you're marketing, but I have a friend who says the word, instead of market, it's mark it. <laughs> and so a way, right, a way to uh, mark it, 
so that other people can be marked by it. Um, so impress people in the sense that an impression, there's an impression that, that touches the soul in a way that brings some kind of grace. And you are shining as a 369. Thank and you. your, your effective loyalty does indeed harmonize. <laughs> and so, um, so let's just close with a, with a meditation and breathe in the grace of this brilliant IQ, five, six, and seven. Brilliant, loving, effective, original EQ of the two, three, and four, and the action of the brilliant and effective and loving and original power, peace, and goodness. We're so grateful that we have access to all that has been made in the image of God, the image of the divine, what is both personal and universal, what is ours and what is beyond us. And we're grateful that harmony can help us access. Peace be with all, all of you. Peace, friend. Oh, hey, next month, Doug and Adele Calhoun, Scott Lorridge coming on to talk about spiritual rhythms and the Enneagram harmony. So I hope you'll come back to hear about that new book. Bye-bye. See you all. Have a great week. Thank you. All right, my friends, I'm burning. I'm going to go put on some block. See you. Have a great, enjoy your time. Thank you. Love you all. Great job, Teresa. Thank you.